Example 2.3. Jamie has become more conscientious about paying off his credit card bill promptly to reduce the amount of interest paid. He was surprised to learn that he paid $400 in interest in 2007 and the amounts shown in the table, which is this one in 2002 and this one in 2004, over the previous several years. If he made his payments to avoid interest charges, he would have had these funds plus earned interest available in the future. What is the equivalent amount five years from now that Jamie could have available had he not paid the interest penalties? Let I equals 5% per year. Okay, so in here, well, let's just say that according to the timeline in the problem, 2007 is now. So it's the present time. We can say that this is year zero. Uh, but Jamie has three one-time payments and he wants to find the amount five years from now. Okay, so let's say, well, let me draw the diagram so that you can look at it better. So here it is. So let's say that 2007 uh, is right here. So let's say that this would be your year zero or now. And Jamie wants to know the equivalent amount five years from now. So you're gonna have year one, year two, year three, year four, and year five. And year five. Okay, so Jamie is looking for a future amount. So let's just say that our future amount it's going to be here and this will be our unknown. But in 2007 Jamie had to pay $400. So I'm going to draw the arrow going down. 400. Then let's go backwards. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 years. So it's one, two, three, four, and five. So this is going to be here minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, and minus five, according to the timeline. So we have 2007, nothing in 2006, nothing in 2005. In 2004, Jamie had to pay 300. So let's make the arrow a little bit shorter. And then nothing in 2003, but in 2002, Jamie had to pay 600, so a little bit uh, longer than the 400. Okay, how do we handle these three cash flows right here? We're gonna have to treat them individually. So basically, let me go to the notes here. We are still looking to find F. So that means that each individual cash flow that we have in 2002, 2004, and 2007 will be given piece. So we already have those amounts given, but these three will be piece individually. So, um, and you can uh, number them or you can uh, put them, well not number, but you can put the symbol that is P, but in order to uh, differentiate them, I'm going to call this uh, P1, P2, and P3. So it doesn't make a difference if you just call all three of them P. Okay, th There's going to be a difference between them and the difference will be the N. So like I said, you're going to treat them individually as if it was three, uh, three different diagrams. Okay, so I'm just going to put here in the notes, the general note, that the procedure that we're going to be using to solve this problem is that we're going to calculate... Oh, hold on. We're going to calculate 
each payment individually as a p value so then again it's going to be find f given p and we're going to add them up at the end okay so therefore if you have p1 p2 and p3 once you move them or that you find the respective f this f right here will consist of the equivalent value of p1 plus the equivalent value of p2 plus the equivalent value of p3 so it'd be the future value of p1 plus the future value of p2 plus the future value of p3 okay but we're going to do everything in one step so that you don't have to make three separate uh, diagrams here so let's start so my f will be equal to and then again we're going to be using this formula or this factor notation right here but we're going to do this three times for each and one of the payments the first one let's go with p1 it's going to be 600 find f given p and i forgot to note down here the i which is five percent per year okay, so all three are subject to this five percent per year so therefore here it's going to be five percent and then you need to find the n for this p so right here from here all the way to there how many years do we have so n is going to be 10 years so over here for f well let me put it in red here you're going to have 10 for your n okay so this is for p1 then we need to add the second one so we're going to be adding p2 which is 300 find f given p same uh, factor a uh, column at five percent but now from here to here the n is going to be what's supposed to be hold on let me draw it better it has to be all the way over there your n must be, it's going to be equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 years. And then again, you can renumber this if you want. So you could move the year 0 to here and make it 1, 2, 3. But it doesn't make any difference as long as you count the years correctly. So over here, your n will be 8. And this is for P2. and we have one more which is the 400 400 find f given p also at five percent and for this one the distance between here to here oh, i got better uh, it's going to be n equal to five years so here I'm going to put a 5 and this is my P3. Kay. So now I have all three of them because so it's as if you had three different diagrams where we're, we're putting everything together in one. And you're going to go to the factor tables. So you go ahead and open your factor table. Here we're looking for the 5%. Sorry, I don't want to make you guys dizzy six percent is a five percent so make sure that you get the right table then you're going to be looking for the column for all of them is fine uh, f given p 
and then you just look for the different years. So we have year 10 factor, we have year 8 factor, and we also have year 5. Okay, so you're going to be plugging in these three values. So it's going to look like this. You will have 600 times the corresponding factor for this one is 1 1.6289 plus 300 times 1.4775 plus 400 1.2763 okay and if you do the math in your calculator you will get $1,931.11 so that will give you the answer or the equivalent value of these three uh, payments okay, converted, we can say converted or moved into the future year uh, well this is the, the what I'm gonna add next it's not part of the problem but it can also work the other way around because remember that here we're looking for F given P based on what we have on the left left hand side but what if it was find P given F? It will also work this way if you had uh, the right problem. But how would that look in terms of a diagram? So I'm just going to note it here, the find P given F. So this is a, I'm going to put it separate. So like I said, this is not part of this problem. But if it were find P, given F, the way this would look like is, well, you would have a diagram here. Let's just say that you have, uh, I'm going to make this up. So you have different years. Doesn't matter how many. One, two, three, four, five, six. So here, if you were looking for P, you would need to have three given Fs. Let's say that you have an F in year two, another one in year four, and then another one in year five. So if you're looking for your P, you should have a given value for F1, a given value for F2, and a given value for F3. Okay, so what you would do here is that you would use the factor find P given F, find P given F, find P given F, taking into consideration your N. So in this case it's two, then this one would be four, this one would be five, and in total your P over here would be composed of the equivalent value of F1 uh, converted into P, F2, and F3. So here you would have F1 plus F2 plus F3. So this would be, like I said, this is a made up uh, diagram, but it would be if you are turning this story over here the other way around.